watching Euphoria again. Today we're going to be watching episode 5 and episode 6 of Euphoria. These two episodes were crazy on the timeline of Twitter. The discourse around each episode is always crazy but it just keeps getting more extreme every single week. Before we get into this video I just want to make sure that you guys have watched the episode before you watch this video because I'm going to be trying to use as little amount of footage from Euphoria as I can because copyright has been really strict with Euphoria lately. I don't know what's going on. So if you haven't watched the episode please go watch the episode. Episode. If you don't watch the episode, this is just going to be a lot of out of context clips and a lot of out, out of context uh, uh, commentary as well. So without further ado, let's get into it, babes. You just want to fucking accuse me of shit? I'm not accusing you, baby, okay? But You're so I fucking know... sure. Let's do it. Come on. Let's go. Let's fucking drug test me. I don't need to. Jules told me everything. First of all, the first thing I want to point out of the scene is Gia. I don't know why. I just, every single time she comes on screen, my heart breaks. Like, I feel like throughout this season, like, I know there's a third season of Euphoria. It's, like, already confirmed. I don't know if they go into Gia a lot through this season. It seems like they haven't. I wish they would have taken the opportunity this season to fully open up Rue's family. I feel like that's a really crucial part of Rue's story, and maybe they'll do that next season, but I feel like... We kind of had a lot of like random branch offs of stories in season two that I wish they kind of like narrowed it down, like cut back on some of these uh, these uh, fleeting storylines that don't have that much of an impact and really opened up with Rue and her family since, you know, the whole show is about her. Like she's the narrator. I wish they peeled back up into her mom more and especially Gia. So when I watch this scene and I see Gia just suffering and just trying to maintain the relationships that she has with both her mom and her sister, it tears me apart. There is so much to unpack here and I feel like this whole season has been watching Cassie make a fool out of herself. Like there are so many different storylines we can jump into and all we have we've been seeing is Cassie literally embarrassing herself every single episode. While it's great, it's hilarious. I'm, I will add that it's hilarious. It kind of seems like we're losing the plot. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Gia. I, I, didn't, I didn't mean to. <laughs> There is so much to say about these scenes, but I think Rue's character and really all characters on Euphoria is to show complexity of individuals and and reasons for why people, reasons for actions, you know, cause and effect and um, understanding the reason why people do things and how it's not such a black and white world we live in. There are cause and effects for everything, you know? A part of watching Euphoria and seeing fans react to Euphoria that bothers me is the stigma still surrounding Rue's character as a whole. People see the actions that she does and and the way she screams at people and stuff like that and they like to push it one way or the other. They like to go, you should understand why she's doing this. She's an addict. She's She has she's struggling so hard. She's went through so much trauma in her life. She lost her dad. Like there there's so much to unpack for why she acts the way she does and then there's an extreme opposite where it's like people calling her a junkie why do we have to sympathize with someone who chooses to do this to themselves yada 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 it, it's two extremes of the criticism versus the sympathy towards rook's character and the and the whole main scheme of euphoria is to not make anyone a hero or a villain. You're not gonna get any character from Euphoria that's gonna be your hero or your villain. Everyone is their own protagonist and antagonist. You as an individual are not the good guy or the bad guy. You as an individual are making mistakes every single day that you can't take back. There's no mistake that you can take back. Like every mistake is permanent. You can make up for it, but you can never take back something that you've done. I just went on a huge tangent that leaps out of Euphoria and more goes on into the whole general concept of Euphoria rather than talking about this scene. But I really wanted to wrap that up into Rue's character because with something I'm sitting on, it's very much obvious to a lot of people watching Euphoria. It's just something that I wanted to verbally say myself and articulate myself because it's something that I'm constantly thinking about when I'm watching the show. So I want that to be in y'all's mind when you're watching me watch it. Oh! And also, that's not me saying that I sympathize with Nate. I 
or cow. I I would hope everyone has critical thinking in not using everything I said to justify domestic abuse, rape, or pedophilia. Um, that's not at all what I was saying. What did you do with them? We flushed them down the toilet. Also, Elliot, why would you let them flush the pills? To be fair, rewind, rewind it back because Rue told you the whole thing. She told you the whole plan. You would know that the suitcase would be what she got from her plan. And I'm assuming you've been doing some of those drugs as well. Why would you do that? Why would you let them flush them? That's a, we need their return on investment or we are going to need to sell our organs on the black market. Well, first things first. Elliot here's a fucking addict. So if he tells you anything fucking different, he's a liar and a fucking snake. Fuck you. I love you. No, the fuck you don't. You love being loved. You're a fucking greedy whore who just likes sucking the life out of people. And it fucking hurts, Jules. You fucking left me at my fucking lowest. And a real fucking friend, someone who fucking loves you, wouldn't do some shit like that, Jules. Let's talk about that. So here, I have a few prompts. You can answer them if you want to. We don't have to agree. That's perfectly fine. These are fictional characters. Did Jules deserve this? Um, do you hate Jules? Um... <laughs> These are just some prompts. I think it's a lot more than a straightforward answer. It's never a yes or no answer for this. Um, do I agree with some of the things that Rue said? Obviously, I think leaving your friend when they're at their lowest is a really shitty thing to do. It's also a lot more complicated than that. I believe we're referring to at the train station. I do think that is a shitty thing to do. I also think it's a lot more layered than that. I think there's a lot more to it than her just leaving her because she was like, fuck you, you're at your lowest, I'm gonna leave. I think it also has to do with the extreme codependency and the extreme codependent relationship that they had at the time and the extreme amount of responsibility Jules felt that she had for with Rue's sobriety. A lot of people came out of this scene saying, Jules deserved it. J Jules deserved to hear every single word of that. And I disagree. And why I disagree is because, first of all, even if some of the things that Rue was saying was true and were attached to real feelings and not just pure anger and resentment for telling her mom about the drugs, verbally abusing someone and screaming at someone like that is not okay. And I think using their weaknesses or things that they shared with you in um, a state of vulnerability is not okay the same thing she did with ali it's the same thing with jules saying that she loved being loved and she just sucks the life out of people like i don't know i i personally don't think that's okay people saying because they don't like jules that she should not have told rue's mom are wrong objectively they're wrong you literally watched lexi's scene where she didn't tell anyone about rue's using and you saw how much guilt she harbored over not telling anybody when Rue overdosed and could have died. There's a few scenarios where you shouldn't tell the parents and that's when the parents are not a safe place to tell someone. Duh. Use your brains. Pick up that pencil. Go to school. Mm -hmm. I think I just have like a cold or something. Okay, well don't get me sick because I have rehearsal. Okay, okay Rachel Berry. <laughs> ma, 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 ma. You don't have to. Just take it one day at a time. Yeah. That, you know what? I know I've been saying a bunch of stuff about people don't deserve this and people don't deserve this. Note to self, don't say optimistic stuff like that to addicts, especially addicts during withdrawal. If you have dirty laundry. I have a quick question for you. What? How long have you been fucking Nate Jacobs? Oh, no! <laughs> fucking my ex-boyfriend, I'm yeah. okay. Literally gonna get violent. No, there is no- She sounds like, um, Sam Puckett. 
Sam Puckett from uh, iCarly. Get her a sock with butter and Cassie's done. Cassie's face is forever done if you get Maddie a sock filled with butter. Right after New Year's. <sighs> you dumb fucking bitch. bitch. I'm gonna no. fuck no. you. <laughs> Don't you. <laughs> Let's cut from her saying I am crazier to her jogging away like Joey King in the kissing booth. One. I would pay a lot of money to see them fight. And I feel like that's all anyone's been doing with their HBO Max subscriptions is paying a lot of money to see Maddie and Cassie fight. I've seen Rue hit more people than Maddie has in this season. This scene ends and you don't see anything more of what unfolds during this night specifically. What was that? I said I'm headed. <laughs> something to say kind of seems like this episode of rue running her breaking to a house and there being a dog there like the guy just lifting up the cup like lifting up and looking under the bed and just being like ah fuck like her throwing up when the cops are talking to her it seems like um like a victorious episode and i feel like it makes sense like tori vega would get herself in this situation i miss you dad I miss you until I close my eyes. <laughs> See, my thing is, how can Sam Levinson write something that good? Like, that scene is perfect. That scene captures a, a young girl going through the most, tr like, going through the hardest time of her life, you losing her father. Like, it is so painful to watch, and it is so wonderful how he like actually captures that in a scene and how Zendaya performs it. It's wonderful. I cannot praise his writing on Rue's character enough because it is so well done. And this scene and what we've been missing from Rue's character captured in this scene is so important. It is so important and it is so well executed. Like if, if I could put it into words, Imagine if someone was to like, just go through the screen, grab you by the heart and keep pulling you closer and just being like, no, go deeper. Uh, Multi-dimensional feeling that you're having. It's, it's, you want to, it's, oh, it's enticing at the same time that it is frightening. Reducing someone's life to a moment, an ugly moment. Punishing them for it. It's what you would do to me if you didn't know me. That line, it's what you would do if you didn't know me, is one of my favorite lines of the fucking show. And it pains me because people watch the show and then they hear that line and they go, oh, it's so great. And then they literally just drop it and they don't apply it to their life at all. all. I just like Rue's narration throughout this entire scene. And I like it that it directs straight to the audience usually Rue's narration does direct straight to the audience and it does break that fourth wall euphoria is very much known for breaking the fourth wall i just like it that it really points out to the audience like you would literally not have any sympathy for me you would not justification for any of my actions or any ounce of forgiveness for me if you didn't know my character with his dad Nathan finally won. The day old piss on the floor. His mom seemed oh, to be handling oh. well. His mom is not doing well with that day old piss on the floor. Someone clean it up. That house stinks. It smells like rancid booze and piss. Because on the phone you just kind of made it sound like, like it was an emergency. Did I? Yeah. <laughs> like you asked if I could cancel rehearsal. Who is he playing in the play? Nate. Nope. <laughs> He's playing Nate in the play. I hope he plays himself in the play. And he knows that it's about everyone. He read the script. He knows it's about everyone. He knows Kat's a character in the play. He's actually so funny for that. His biggest revenge on her. I have a brain disorder. What? It's the rest of the sentence. That's the rest of the sentence. Yeah, my sentence for jail. Like, that's literally what they're going to give me. At, just brain disorder. That's all I'm getting. I feel like you started to break up with me, and then you pivoted to telling me that you got, like, a terminal brain illness, and... He's uh, like, he's like, don't get it twisted. I've been 
reading the script for the play, I know the ins and outs of your character as well. And I know all about you. I gotta feel, all because I don't meet your expectations. All right, well, you're right. You didn't live up to my expectations because I did expect you to at least be honest. Ugh. I am being He's honest. kind of king. All right, I don't even think you believe Slay that. Slay queen. Yeah, what happened to the cat that wore glasses? I am being honest. All right, I don't even think you believe that, but you know, that's besides the point, because I think we need to break up. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow, I didn't see that one coming. Mm. <laughs> she could have saved herself. She could have saved herself so easily if she just went, yes, I panicked and said I was, I had to bring this order uh, because I panicked. I am trying to break up with you. I'm sorry for lying. Th it could have been that easy, but she doubled down. She doubled down multiple times. I kind of liked it though. It was kind of funny. Everyone thinks that I was hooking up with Nate when he and Maddie were still together, but that's not accurate. There was no crossover. Cassie. Yeah, I think someone needs to tell her that even if they were not together, it is still wildly messed up. It's like, even if there was no crossover, hooking up with your best friend's ex is still weird. Like, I feel like, I don't know, something about sharing uh, experiences like that seems weird to me. But when you grabbed her after that and you like pulled her ass off, I was thinking that's my boy, huh? Sticking up for his mama. Mwah! That's just not funny. I don't know, if I saw my son, my son grab someone like that, I would actually beat the fuck out of him. First of all, I can stand up for myself. I'm like, not a fucking loser. I can stand up for myself to a literal child, <laughs> to a literal teenager. If I was, if I was a grown, like not now, not, <laughs> not now, don't, don't get it twisted. I cannot stand up to a teenager right now. No, I'm not gonna tell you because you'll tell Nate. I don't fucking trust you. I know you fell in love with someone who spent years making fun of you it's sad the way she's like like pouting like that is actually so funny no one does that's cassie is the comedic relief of the season and i like it that like points that are being said to her like by lexi even like they're not just the typical like they're not even what she's defending herself from like cassie's going in circles being like they weren't together and people are like that's not really why people are angry with you it's also just like very sad like he just like made fun of you for so long like he actually warned mckay not to sleep with you because of things that prior exes had done to you by filming you without your consent and posting them online that's what i'm like cassie's defending herself from things that people aren't even talking about like and then when they do bring it up, she's like, I don't know. She's actually so funny. Very hard life. Not harder than my life or Lexi's life. And if you weren't such a fucking loser with no self-respect, you'd drop her because she treats you like shit. Oh my God. The fact, Cassie, you can't stick to what anyone is talking about. Like no one's talking about that. Like. This is where the point is and you're veering off all these different directions that don't have any correlation to why people are mad at you right now. I just don't know why she's veering off like that. It's deflecting. She's deflecting your honor and it's embarrassing to watch. You said you didn't have any self-respect. You don't have to, I can fucking feel it! The feet slapping. She's a foot slapper. Her bare feet slapping on the floor is stinky. Exorcism on the way for the girl with the big stomp stomp. She's scaring me. You don't have to, I can fucking feel it. Ugh. I know you better than anyone in this world. He didn't even try asking for it. He didn't even try asking for it like a normal fucking person. He's holding a gun to her stomach, scaring the life out of her. And he didn't even ask her first back for it. Like, he didn't even ask her for it. Like a normal fucking person. <laughs> I don't say this lightly. I really think he should kill himself. I really think that you should just kill yourself. Like, what the fuck is wrong with him? <gasps> what was the point of that scene? He didn't even try asking. He didn't even try asking. I was joking. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Her feet are kind of very dirty. Sorry, that was not the thing I should have been focusing on in the, but her feet were really dirty. How do you joke about Russian roulette? There's no bullets in the gun. How do you joke about Russian roulette? Like if you wanted to do a fun little joke, you could have just, I don't know, done something like, 
put spaghetti in his shoes. I don't know. Like, I don't know why he decided to do that. Everything I ever said was true. Same here. God, what a horrible, horrible writing arc. I'm sorry. I am so sorry. The arc that we went on from Jules and Nate through season one to season two was absolutely pitiful. And why I say that, it's, that's not me saying that I wanted them to get together. I didn't want a happy ending. I didn't want, I just wanted something more to happen. Like nothing really happened. Like it just doesn't seem like a complete story. You know what I mean? Like it just kind of seems poorly written. <laughs> What's crazy about this, what's crazy is that I ruined my entire life for you, is that out of every single person in this show that Nate has forced to do something, he didn't force her to do anything. The only thing he forced her to do was like not tell anyone, but she's the only one that he didn't force to do anything. He forced Maddie to do things, he forced Jules, he forced that poor kid that's now in jail. I don't think he's even spoken a word to her. I don't think he's asked her to do anything. He just asked her to be the Jules <laughs> stand-in, which is weird. I shower that little one with love. She's been waiting on it. That actually makes me want to cry. I don't know. I just think it's very important. I just thought that line was so important because it's also important for people that are the Gia's of their life to hear that. I don't know. I, I, I believe that's very important. I don't know. I love that line that he says that. I feel like it's so, I don't know. It's so validating and it's so um, precious to me. Like it's precious um, not only for Gia the character for, but for the Gia's in real life. In conclusion, after this episode, I just think that, I mean, I don't really think the writing was that bad. Like, I don't think the dialogue was bad in either of these episodes. I think the dialogue in these episodes was actually very amazing. I think it was uh, very easy to, not easy to watch, but um, easy to process, like the words that they're saying, and it actually seems like real people talking in these two episodes my main criticism for this is the arc of their plots and how they are not creating arcs they're creating like weird uh like they're disappearing into the timeline and then coming back out of nowhere and weirdly getting tied up in ways that don't really make sense or really fit the plot that they were previously building and my main praises for this is pretty much just rue and Rue's family, like just how it's all written and how it's coming together. Now, do I wish that this took more of a place? Like I wish the first four episodes was condensed a little bit, at least when it contain when it pertains to Rue's story. I feel like it was a little bit dragged out. I think like we could have, you know, taken a bit of the fluff that is Cassie and Nate and all that kind of stuff and kind of focused in a little bit more on Rue. For Rue, I think, and for, you know, her storyline, it doesn't just rely on shock value. I think it um, has so many elements that make it what it is. Um, and I think a lot of other plots in Euphoria rely on shock value. And that's probably another main criticism for the other plots as well. Those are my final thoughts for episode five and episode six of Euphoria. They're kind of a little bit more broad. Uh, they they kind of go more general rather than super micro. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Obviously leave your comments down below what you guys thought of these episodes. If you disagree with me, it's completely fine don't really give a fuck. I'm going to see you guys next time for the final Euphoria video for season two. It's gonna be a wild ride, so I'll see you guys then.